Hello and welcome back to Fog. This is a video guide on how to optimize and boost the FPS for Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, which released on PC earlier this month. I'd like to point out this guide will definitely be helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming systems with much more effectiveness. The guide will not only show you how to boost the FPS, but it will also improve game quality and your system's performance. And in turn, this should help fix any lag or FPS drops or stutters that you could be experiencing while you play. First and foremost, we're gonna go over the very best tips, tricks, and settings for gaming on Windows 10 step-by-step. -step. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step one, clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders, which are basically tones and textures that your installed games save. Every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes, and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory too. Resetting your shader cache should always be the first thing you do before installing a new game or when a new update comes along. Now there's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step two, to ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuner, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low end gaming systems that need all the power they can get basically. To turn the Steam overlay off just head into the Steam setting menu, click in game and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in game. To turn off the Nvidia GeForce overlay open up Nvidia GeForce experience, click on the settings icon, go to general and switch off the in game overlay. For Xbox Game Bar, using the Windows search bar, type Game Mode Settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on Captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open Settings and on the left, select Overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says Enable In-Game Overlay. After you've done that, navigate to Advanced and make sure Hardware Acceleration is set to Off, as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the Windows search bar, type in Game Mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure Game Mode is set to On. For quite some time, there were issues with this particular setting, but Microsoft has now finally fixed it. So basically, if you're running the very latest version of Windows 10, make sure you turn Game Mode On. This will force all your PC resources on the game you're playing and suppresses any background activity from affecting your system while you game. Step number four, navigate back to Windows search bar, type in graphics settings and click the icon. Now in here, you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This needs to be set to on. And if it wasn't, you will need to restart your PC after you turn it on. Once that's done, navigate down to graphics performance preference and you will want to add Spider-Man to your graphics performance list to get the most out of your game. In order to do this, you will need to know exactly where your game is installed and you will need to add the games launch application to your list. To do this, open Steam up, go to your library, right click on Spider-Man Remastered, click on Properties, then click Local Files and then click Browse. What you then want to do is copy the directory link which is where your game is installed. You can then close Steam down and go back to your graphic settings window. Click Browse and then you'll want to paste the link to the address bar at the top. Click enter and then you can just find the application icon for Spider-Man Remastered and you'll simply add it to your graphics list. Finally, you just click on options, set it to high performance, click save and then you're done. Step 5. 
go back to the window search bar once again, type in power plan and click edit power plan. At the very top, click power options and under preferred plans, ensure high performance is selected. Step six, if you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Step seven, background apps. Simply type settings into Windows search bar and click the icon, then select privacy. On the left menu, scroll down all the way until you see background apps. Then simply switch off, let apps run in the background. Step eight, the Windows Registry Edit. Now this step may look a little daunting, but it really isn't, I promise. Just follow along and you're gonna be 100% just fine. First, just head on over to the window search bar. Type in run and hit enter. Once the new window opens up, simply type in reg edit, as you see on screen, and hit enter once again. You're now inside the Windows Registry Editor. In here, we're going to optimize and tweak a couple of values that will set important Windows Registry keys to completely prioritize gaming above all else. This includes your CPU resources. So start off by double clicking H key local machine, then double click software, then find the Microsoft folder and once again double click it. Then scroll down until you find Windows NT and you guessed it, double click that. Then double click the current version folder and finally scroll down until you find the multimedia folder and double click that one. You'll now be seeing a folder called System Profile and I want you to just click that one once. Now to the right, you will see two options inside. One is titled Network Throttling Index and the other is titled System Responsiveness. Starting with Network Throttling, I want you to double click it and delete any any value you see in there and then you proceed to type in eight F's as in F F F F F F F F and this will actually disable network throttling completely, which is extremely beneficial for gaming. Now, once that's done, click OK and exit. Next up, double click on system responsiveness and change the value to zero. This will actually ensure all your CPU resources go towards gaming. And once you've edited the values inside these two registries, head back over to the left and double click on system profile. Then double click on tasks and then click the games folder just once. Head over to the right and double click on GPU priority and set the value data to eight. You then click OK. Next up, double click priority and change the value to six and click OK. Finally, double click on scheduling category and change the value data to high if it wasn't already and click on OK. You have now successfully optimized the Windows registry for gaming. Step number nine, clearing out your temp folder. This is a pretty simple step and it will clear away a huge amount of unnecessary dumped files that are just simply cluttering your machine. Firstly, head down to the window search bar and type in percent app data percent and hit enter. Once the window pops up, you will need to ensure that your hidden items are actually showing as this is a hidden folder. To do that, all you need to do is click on view at the top and then tick the box to the right that says hidden items. Once you've done that, click app data on the address bar and you will see a sort of transparent folder called local. Double click on it and then scroll all the way down until you find another transparent folder that's called temp. Once inside here, you'll want to click and drag your mouse to highlight every single file inside the folder. Then just right click on your mouse and select delete. A window will pop up and what you simply need to do is tick the box that says do this for all current items and then click skip and keep doing the same until the process is finished and you're only actually left with the files that are actually being used by your machine inside the folder. Okay, so now we're gonna dive into the game and we're gonna change a couple of things. Now with pretty much any game, we can just put everything on low and that should probably be fine. You'll likely get smooth performance, but the visual quality would probably be very poor. The whole point is to try and maintain as high a graphical quality as we can whilst getting the very most amount of FPS at the same time, providing that balance. And that's exactly what we try and aim to do with this guide. 
So as soon as you click twice to start the game, you should see the initial window, which contains only four options. These are play, settings, PlayStation PC, and quit. We're gonna go into settings, and this should open the display tab automatically for you. Now, window mode should always, of course, be on exclusive full screen for best performance. And of course, ensure that you're using your main monitor and that the display resolution of your monitor is its native resolution. My monitor is a 1440p monitor, so I set mine to 2560 by 1440. If you have the option to use DLSS or FSR, then absolutely use it, and I recommend using either balanced or performance. Dynamic resolution scaling should be left off. Your refresh rate should be the value of your monitor's maximum refresh rate. Mine is 165, so I set mine to 165. Then with V-Sync or vertical synchronization, you should set it to off if you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor. If you don't have that function with your monitor, then having V-Sync on or off is really down to you. If you have it on, it will stop your screen from tearing, but you might have a little bit of input latency, which which is very low. Setting VSync off will remove that input latency, but you might see some screen tearing. If you do set it off, then it is recommended that you cap the frame rate to no higher than 60 FPS as that will help minimize tearing. And lastly, for those of you that don't have DLSS or FSR, you should set your anti-aliasing to either off or SMAA. Any higher option, any higher option will have around an 8% cost to your FPS, which is pretty substantial. So now let's head into the graphics tab. To begin with, bloom, vignette, chromatic aberration, and lens flares should really all be off, or unticked in this case. These settings don't actually have a huge impact to your game's performance, but they don't really help with the game's graphical quality, so I recommend you turn it off, but it's up to you. For texture quality, I recommend medium. Texture filtering should be on eight times anisotropic. Shadow quality should be on low. This applies to any game you ever play. Depth of field, I'm going to say either low, very low, or completely off. Your personal preference on that one. For level of detail should be either low or medium. Then both traffic density and crowd density should be on low. This will actually give your CPU a nice bit of breathing space and it won't be working so hard all the time while you play. Hair quality can be either left on high or adjusted down to normal. For ambient occlusion, works best on SSAO and leave screen space reflections on, but set weather part to low. Then for the sliders, field of view should be left as the default value of zero. Then both motion blur and film grain strength should be set to zero. Ray tracing should just be completely off, unless you're running a 3090 or something. In which case, I really have no idea why you're watching this video. But anyway, ray tracing is ridiculously taxing on performance. So there is absolutely no reason to be on at all. Just leave it off. You'll have a much smoother and better experience with the game. Of course, these settings really depend on your PC. So definitely play around and see what works best for your system. I do really hope the guide helps you in some way or another. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching. A good Goodbye.